Hello, welcome back to another video. This is going to be uh, my match against iJubeer. Uh, this is for our local tournament. This is round two, and this is my weighted Toxic Cup. So uh, it's going to be four rounds, and I'm hoping that I win. So, because uh, wins do a lot for your rank. So, um, although if I lose, whatever. It's just rank. It doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty taking Toxic Cup pretty casually. Uh, I have, like, some garbage team that, like... I mean, I think the team is okay. It's just, like, I didn't put any dust in. Like, I didn't build a Wormadam. Like, I don't have a 14-12 Wormadam problem because I didn't try to invest in one. So, like, I don't... Like, there's not this, like, ah, oh, shit, I can't power it up to 1500 kind of problem. Or maybe the IVs of this Wormadam are just really bad. Like, it's actually really hard to find uh, Burmy. Like, trash Burmies that, like, have good IVs that it can even get up to 1500. It's pretty hard, so... Yeah, either way, like, I feel for you. I feel for my opponent, and Wormadam's actually so strong that it can operate just fine at 14-12. Like, I guarantee it. I guarantee that Wormadam is doing just fine uh, against me. Golbat screwed. And Skuntank is gonna nuke it, one-shot it with Flamethrower regardless. Um, it may actually do, like, one less confusion damage to Heracross, which would be interesting... Because Heracross needs a little bit of help to get to close combat. But close combat will definitely kill Wormadam. So, I think Heracross can normally get to it anyways. Like, you can normally reach a close combat from, like, if they're both starting fresh. I think it can hit a close combat before it gets hit with a charge move. So, either way, um, Heracross tends to take a shield from Wormadam. Um, Steelix. So, Steelix actually walls, like, Wormadam, Golbat, Pidgeot. Has some issues with Piloswine. I'm not sure how it does against Flygon, to be perfectly honest. I think that Earth Power Spam is real, but I also think that, like, Dragon Tail does quite a bit of damage. Flygon is squishy, and Crunch also hurts. So, I'm not really sure how to evaluate that. I don't I don't super know the Toxic Cup matchups. I'm just kind of trying to, like, intuit them and show you my thought process on how I do that. Um, as far as... Shiftry is concerned, so I think that Piloswine is weak to Leaf Blade, and then I am weak to Avalanche, but I hit Leaf Blade way faster than Avalanche. So it's quite possible that Shiftry can actually nuke out a Piloswine before uh, Piloswine can sort of retaliate with its own uh, charge move. So I might win in like the one shield there. Um, I think what is interesting is Heracross is really strong against everything but the Flyers. And Wormadam, I don't know, his team's really balanced. I kind of like his team. I'm just going through each of my picks and trying to decide. Um, Bibarel has a Mirror, beats Piloswine, yeah, beats or loses to Flygon, depending on if they have a Mudshot Breakpoint, and they Dragon Claw Spam, or if they bait you. And then... Um, it kind of does a little rough against Wormadam, but it's possible that the 14-12 Wormadam actually loses to Beaverell, now that I now that I think about it. Because it might hit a water gun break point against it, at which point it, the Beaverell, like might actually do one more point of damage. Um, a lot of Beaverells are really close to hitting that anyway, so it's possible that we get that. Um, Beaverell tends to be kind of favorable against Golbat, and I don't know anything about Pidgeot other than that, like, it has crappy moves. <laughs> and, like, it does a lot of good neutral flying damage, and flying damage is really hard to resist in this cup. So, um, hmm. I'm thinking a bit more about the Skuntank. Skuntank beats Beaverell in the one shield. It probably loses... No. Why would it lose to Golbat? I don't know. Golbat does neutral fast move damage. Skuntank is resisted against Golbat. So... Fast move wise, Golbat wins. But charge move wise, Skuntank wins. Because Golbat, all of his charge moves are resisted. Unless the 1477 Golbat is because of like... Ominous Wind. Or maybe it's like a purified Golbat or something. like. I don't know. That's like a suspiciously low amount of CP. Um, because it's usually pretty easy to power up beyond that to get to uh, a better a better CP rank. So I'm honestly not sure about that. Um, so I'm I'm kind of feeling. So my team's actually like kind of weak to fighters, and my opponent's not running a fighter, which is unfortunate because I actually can usually guess that fighters are going to happen. So right now I'm feeling like 
there's two there's two conclusions I can make about worm and M trash. Either either my opponent knows that the low CP probably still means it's functional. Sorry about that. Either my opponent knows the low CP still makes it functional, or they think, ah, I kind of couldn't get it to 1500. I'm not going to really use it, but I am going to put it on my team. I've seen both. I have definitely seen both. So I think I'm going to put my opponent on not using Wormadam until I see them use Wormadam. So um, I think I feel okay with that. Because I need to start ruling out some stuff because I don't have anything that's good against like four. As far as I can tell, I don't have any picks that are good against four. Maybe Golbat? No, not really. Yeah. Heracross, no. Bieberil, no. Shiftry, hell no. Um, actually, Shiftry is a maybe, actually, yes. Rubenam Trash loses to Foul Play Spam. Flygon dies to Leaf Blade Spam. Um, Pillow Swine dies to... Hey, sorry about that. My recording just cut out. It uh, was running out of space and it was yelling at me, so I freed up 87 gigs. Because Google was like, we backed all this up if you want to just kill it. So, yeah, I did, and now we have recording time forever. But we're not going to take forever. We're just going to talk about Shiftry. So Shiftry can Leaf Blade spam the Bieberl. I think it's faster than Pylo Swine and it should kill it. It is... I'm not sure if it's faster than Flygon. Flygon is 9 energy every two turns and shiftry is 13 energy every three turns so 4.5 energy per turn versus like uh let's see it'd be 9 10 11 12 13 so 4.3 ooh very close so 4.3 versus 4.5. So Flygon is a little bit faster to Dragon Claw spam. But I don't think Dragon Claw is as good of a move. I just don't think it's as good of a move. They're both neutral damage. And I'm resisting the Mud Shots. When Flygon does Mud Shot, I resist it. But my Snarls are doing uh, neutral. So yeah, I think I'm advantaged against Flygon too. And then I'm advantaged against Wormadam. So I really just have to watch out for the Flyers. So this could be a game where I use Shiftry, and then I try to deal with the Flyers as best I can, maybe with Bieberil, maybe with Golbat and Steelix, something like that. So I'm going to try and think of a line that has... So first of all, I have to ask, does Shiftry want to lead, or does Shiftry want to chill in the, in the back somewhere? And I think the answer is... Nope, I don't know. I don't know. I think Steelix is another contender for doing really well, because it beats both the Flyers very hard. It beats Wormadam very hard. Um, I think it has play against Flygon, because Flygon has to hit the Earth moves, and otherwise I resist the Dragon moves. And I think Swine is just neutral to it. No, 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 no. Swine is Bulldoze. What am I talking about? Yeah, Bulldoze would definitely mess it up. So... I think Steelix is most weak to Flygon, Pillow Swine, and Bieberil, and Shiftry is very good at fighting them. So basically, Steelix takes out the right side of his team, and uh, and Shiftry takes out the left side of the team. So then I just need something to basically lead with, um, I would think. So maybe like a Skun Tank? Or no, I can shift into a Skun Tank. So I can lead with one of those two, shift into a Skun Tank, because it generally has like a bunch of like neutral kind of stuff going on. Like it it sort of doesn't do terrible against like any of these really. And then um And then and with an energy lead, like its charge moves are pretty threatening. So I think I'm gonna say swap into a Skun Tank. If it dies, then I'll eventually come in with Shiftry or or Steelix. Maybe I could like double shield. Uh, the Skun Tank, win switch advantage, and then make sure to get my Steelix onto the Flyer and my Shiftry onto the whatever. It sounds a little rough, but it could work out. Um, sh the only reason it's rough is because Shiftry doesn't function very well without shields, so I'm not quite sure if I like that idea, but um, we'll have to see. Like, if, if my opponent picks like a perfectly balanced team, it could be tough. 
Um, but I think... I think B-Barrel looks like too good of a neutral matchup to not use. Maybe I'll just use B-Barrel instead of Skuntank. Um, and then do either a Shiftry lead or a Steelix lead. What? Well, the question to usually answer there is, what is my opponent going to do? So, um, my opponent probably likes the looks of... Probably doesn't like B-Barrel, to be honest. Um, although, I don't know. That could come down to personal preference, but... It doesn't have a lot of great matchups here. Um, Pilo Swine also doesn't seem great. I have decent ability to handle it, but not great. So, yeah, maybe Pilo Swine's all right. It's just a weird Pokemon that most people don't run in most tournaments. So it's kind of like it's it's hard to be comfortable with it. And I and I tend to think. Um, so I'm like the only ace ranked player in this lobby. So I tend to think that people are potentially intimidated to fight me and they might only run things they're comfortable with. So, um, using that psychology to my advantage, I think Piloswine might be out. Uh, I think Wormadam Trash might actually be in. I think one of the flyers is definitely in and I think maybe Flygon. Yeah. Maybe. It's either Flygon or Pillow Swine, I think. And either one is good. The only thing I'm really worried about is if it's, like, Double Flyer. Like, I don't really know what to do about that. Like, I'm actually kind of screwed up by Double Flyer. Um, I think Golbat and Steelix can handle it. And Bibarel can be okay. So, it's actually very possible that it's, like, Double Flyer and then, like, Bibarel or Flygon to defend against, like, the Steelix. Um... Honestly, Piloswine could probably defend against the Steelix and kill the Golbat that will be answering the Flyer. So, Piloswine actually does both. Man, maybe I should just expect a double Flyer. That's actually, like, quite likely. So, what I'm saying is I like my Shiftry, I like my Steelix, and I like Bibarel as a neutral. But... Bibarel is going to have to kill one flyer, Golbat's going to have to kill the other, and then Shiftry's going to have to kill whatever's left. And I'm going to have to do that with, like, switch advantage, making sure I get the right guys on the right teams, and making sure that I don't spend too many shields. Because none of my guys can really do their job without shields. Like, I'll kind of, like, barely squeak out a win. So what I'm trying to do is consider running a Steelix to, like, really wall the flyers, and then that would produce a much larger comfortable zone for me to like win out with like a generalist. So I'm kind of thinking maybe a Steelix lead swap to a Bibarel and then a Golbat in the back. And then if my, if I swap to the Bibarel, I can like double shield it, try to win whatever that is. And then if the Wormadam comes out, I throw Steelix in and I don't need shields to beat it. If a flyer comes out, then I throw my flyer out to answer it. And yeah, yeah, so I think that's good. So I think I'm going to jump into my game right now and set up my two teams in advance. Uh, so we're going to go with a battle group party. Uh, we're going to go with a preset number one. We're going to do... Um, uh, we're gonna do, we liked Shiftry, Bibarel, and Steelix. And we just need to figure out which of the two we're gonna lead with, and Bibarel's our safe switch. And then for the second one, we're gonna go with, uh, we were talking about Golbat and Steelix to answer the double flyer, and then we're talking about, uh, Bibarel as our switch in. Um, so I think like a Steelix lead, Bieber will switch in, and then we have the other two to answer uh, sort of accordingly. The only thing is if it's a Piloswine lead, then I'm actually not sure what I want versus that, but I think Steelix is probably the best to answer it. I think Golbat is going to struggle a lot versus Piloswine, and I think Steelix can play uh, the Piloswine. It's just hard. So... Yeah, I think this is good. I think Steelix ultimately... I don't know why I thought that Avalanche would be the move that they used earlier when I was talking about it. They're definitely going to use Bulldoze against Steelix. So I think either way I'm screwed. 
but I could try to like shift into a Golbat in response to that and like absorb the Bulldoze. Um, I'll just have to figure out. I think Bulldoze is sixty energy, and uh, Avalanche or and Powder Snow is eight energy a turn. So it's like eight turns will get you to sixty four. So uh, I think I have to count like eight Powder Snows and then uh, switch in response to the maybe the second Bulldoze. So like block the first and then switch on the second one, something like that. Um, I could also just swap into B Barrel. Um, really at some point during that. And I don't know. I just really hate the, the, the pile of swine sounds really tough. I don't know, you guys. Um, yeah, I'm not a super big fan of this team in particular. I'm kind of a bigger fan of like the preset number one team where I have the shift tree as the lead to deal with the pile of swine and then, uh, B roll as the safe swap just in case. And then eventually the Steelix to kind of clean up the flyer that I definitely think there is going to be a flyer and or Wormadam that Steelix is going to need to help me with. So, yeah, I like preset one myself. I'm going to cut the video for now and I'll see you guys later whenever I uh, whenever my opponent reaches out to me. That was just my sort of preamble, uh, like pre-analysis before I actually fight. And I wanted to talk through it a bit more because I feel like there's a lot of interesting little tidbits that could kind of go on in there. So, um, yeah, hopefully you learned something and I'll see you on the next cut. All right, hey everyone, uh, welcome back to uh, this part of the video. Uh, so this, I'm probably wearing a different shirt than I was yesterday because we're battling on a different day. So I did some analysis and I hope that that was helpful. And then so now we're looking at our two preset teams that we've chosen. Uh, kind of the number one and number two. Uh, I remember feeling more comfortable about number one less comfortable about number two. I don't really know exactly what analysis I gave, but I'm confident in previous me, which is important to do. Uh, these are the teams again, and uh, we should be getting an invite here momentarily from our opponent, and then we'll do our little uh, best of three here. Uh, this is gonna be round two in our weighted tournament. Um, so yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get it. Uh, it is, Pretty interesting if I run the the first one with the Bibarel and Steelix. It looks like Bibarel is the safe swap for obvious reasons. They don't really have a huge counter for it. Um, uh, there he is now. Sounds like he just sent it. So uh, let's jump out of the team thing here and uh, we'll look at this gym just kind of like freaking out while we wait for our invite. And Sableye is, of course, yelling at us that he got like, even more gifts. And he wants to give us souvenirs like clams and like rocks that he collects and like other stupid shit that like other buddies have already given me, Sableye. Like, you're, you're, you're not bringing me anything new, man. Uh, okay, cool. So, um, and then what are the leads that Shiftry likes? Uh, Shiftry is kind of okay with Flygon Wormadam. Bibarel and I'm not sure about Pillow Swine. Like, I just don't know. Um, so, yeah, we're basically switching Shiftry out if there's a bird. And if there's a bird, we're switching into Bibarel. And then if there's... I don't know, then we'll just try and get our Steelix on whatever we can in the, in the end. And we'll probably end up too... Sh well, I don't know. Okay, cool. So I think this goes well for us, but I, I have no idea. I didn't expect a Pillow Swine lead. That's pretty interesting. But yeah, we only need to do like we only need to do like three snarls for a leaf blade. We did four because we want our opponent to shield. We're expecting an avalanche in return. Um, avalanche is pretty potent. Uh, it does like so much damage. It's one. It's one of the strongest damaging moves in the game. All right, here we go. We got another one. They're probably going to have to spend another shield or die. If they don't die, I'm switching the Bibarel here. Okay, they uh, spent another shield. I'm kind of thinking about just coming in with Bibarel. No, nah, I'm going to I'm gonna win switch advantage. I expect I expect it will be helpful for us. We're going to over front. Ooh. Uh, okay. Interesting. So we actually no longer have a Leaf Blade anymore. I'm wondering if we can farm up a bit against this Pidgeot. 
Yes, we have a leaf blade now. You can see it through the switch window. So if you saw the switch window, the leaf blade popped up and was like, it stopped being like uh, translucent or whatever. And so, yeah, we want to at least have a leaf blade ready on Shiftry immediately because Shiftry's attack stat is very high. And if it ever comes down to a CMP uh, tie at the end of the game, um, then we're going to want that. Uh, we're probably only going to do like that much as far as our uh, crunch goes. Maybe like one or two more bubbles because we want to dragon tail the rest of it down. We don't want to kill this Pidgeot. Uh, I don't think Pidgeot has anything besides flying moves, to be perfectly honest. Or, like, I don't think Pidgeot has a neutral damage attack against me. I think it's all just resisted. So we're going to farm it up, get a bunch of energy. Woo! Look at us go. And then we are going to spam Earthquake, I think. Seems good. Seems powerful. Seems potent. So we're going to spam Earthquake, and then maybe the Pillow Swine is spamming Bulldoze. Who knows? Okay, this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt the pillow swine a lot. All right, let's do it. Boom. All right. And then we have a Bibarel, which is... Come on, Leaf Blade, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right. That's why we wanted the Leaf Blade from Shiftry before, so we can do that. Yikes, that is a tremendous amount of damage. Um, I'm actually going to bring Steelix back in. I don't want to reveal that I have a uh, that I have a Beebrill. Unfortunately, uh, our opponent did pull the trigger on the charge move, so we are going to have to reveal our third Pokemon that we uh, we intended to bring in. And then I'm going to get some lag, some lag. Okay. There we go. It seems like on the third, the the like the third Pokemon, whenever it comes in, it lags a lot. The game like really has trouble with that, and so I've noticed to just like not tap my screen when when I select my third Pokemon. Like don't start tapping my screen until the little Pokeball starts like flying out and the like charge moves come up and then start tapping my screen. It might it might cause me to be a little behind on energy, but that's okay. Like I'd rather that than freezing for like 15 seconds while you're staring at your Pokemon and they're staring at you. And then suddenly your health bar is like a third less and they have like two charge moves. Um, and you didn't do anything at all. So um, yeah, our first team was pretty successful. Let's mentally go over what our opponent actually brought. It was a Pidgeot, a Beeberill, and a Piloswine. So, Shiftry is good against two, all right? Steelix is good against w one, which is why we got the switch advantage, right? Which is why we spent the two shields so we could get the Steelix on the Pidgeot. And then um, our own Beeberell is kind of fine against most, right? So uh, once again, Beeberell kind of takes it for us. I think what we want now is I think we're gonna run the same thing and we're just gonna swap our B-Barrel into anything, I guess. And then we'll just double shield it. It does make it a little awkward because Shiftry has a hard time winning the things it's supposed to win if it is shields down. So um, we'll, we'll try it and we'll see how it goes. But I'm 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 confident in this strategy because B-Barrel is such a safe swap and I'm confident that we can try to make like some good decisions to try and pull out a win but um by no means is it guaranteed if i gain switch advantage that this will work out fortunately we already won the lead here so um we're just probably going to get an immediate swap out okay that's pidgeot we're going to instantly switch to steelix um so we are going to farm up 100 energy again like we did before uh we're going to toss out this crunch and see how much damage it does Okay, a decent chunk. So uh, maybe we'll actually just farm up 100 energy, to be honest. I think I think we can actually just drag and tail down from here. It should be fine. Yeah, Brave Bird is the higher DPE move compared to Aerial Ace. So I do I do recommend that our opponent goes uh, str strictly for Aerial Ace. Or sorry, strictly for Brave Bird. Because <laughs> um, it, it does more damage um, per, per energy. Uh, I think regardless of Brave Bird or Aerial Ace here, I think I think I survive a Brave Bird, so I'm not going to pull the trigger here. I think it's an Aerial Ace though. And then we are going to Dragon Tail. And since we were the Okay, we're just gonna spam our charge move. 
We're going to spam Earthquake because it hurts real bad. Against lots of things. Ooh, man, it hurts a Wormadon, that's for sure. Uh, so Wormadon, we're probably going to have to fight with our Beaverill. Um, just because we want our Bieber, our we want our Shiftry against their Beaverill, right? So, yeah, that's kind of how that works. So we are just going to let our Steelix fall the old-fashioned way. Man, I actually might have been able to get to two Earthquakes. That would have been crazy. Um, so here we're going to toss out the Beaverill, and we're going to start water gutting to our heart's content. Um, if this is a bug buzz, we kind of don't care. And it's in an iron head, which we're going to resist. So if it was a bug buzz, we actually might kind of like die. And, um, but if we died, we don't care because Shiftry can take out both. Like that's why I wanted to lead Shiftry is because it has such good matchups against the majority of his team. Uh, I think he's just not shielding and kind of like, uh, conceding sort of to like a fast move, um, kind of kind of thing like ah crap like yeah i can't really win this one um so uh ggs let's see if it goes to game three we'll see if uh we'll just we'll just go ahead and select our good old uh, same team as before um really no reason to switch it and then um we haven't so far we haven't really had to swap our b barrel in as a safe switch but if our opponent leads with a flyer then we will and we'll see how it goes Okay, our opponent led with a flyer. It's possible they have two flyers. That would be dope, man. That would be like my kind of my kind of strat, you know. Pew 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 pew. So what I'm worried about is, oh, that's a ground type Pokemon. So ground type Pokemon are weak to water, which is fantastic. Uh, it means water gun's gonna be super effective, and this surf is probably lethal if they don't shield. Okay, they do shield. Also, we resist ice, so we resist all these ice moves from this pile of swine. So if this is an avalanche, we resist it. And if it's a bulldoze, bulldoze isn't a great move, so we're actually going to survive either way. Now, resisting an avalanche is still an avalanche. Like, if y'all didn't know avalanche is kind of a nuts move, um, it's, it's almost like a community day move, like blast burn or, you know, frenzy plant or whatever. So, yeah, it's, it's very powerful. Um, so let's, uh, continue. Um, so since we won switch advantage, what we actually do is we're just gonna, like, leave the Beaverell. We don't care. Like, okay, he dies. We're gonna bring the, uh, the Steelix, because the Steelix is good at this kind of thing. And then we're hoping there's not a second flyer in the back, because we want Shiftry to do literally anything. That would be great. If our opponent had a fighter, I think this lineup that we have, it would be very, like, severely disrupted. But, um, oh god, it's return. Ooh. Flygon. Interesting. Well, I'm going to toss out a crunch because it does a lot. And then we're going to swap shift tree in. These leaf blades are going to get resisted. But we actually have a shield advantage uh, against Flygon. So... Uh, I think what we're going to do is shield one. We're going to farm up even more, then throw a leaf blade, and then we are going to uh, foul play the uh, Golbat in the back um, if needed. But yeah, I, I kind of don't want to spend the second shield because I don't want to get Shadow Bolt on my... Um, on my Steelix. And I think this Dragon Claw doesn't KO. I think it does like a decent chunk of damage, but I think like leaf blade does more damage, man. Like, Leaf Blade's just Leaf Blade. Ugh. God, it's so gross. Um, actually, I don't want to KO. I kind of want to, like, hit, kill with a Snarl. Okay. And I think we can actually get there to this Foul Play, which is great. And then I'm not sure if Golbat survives this, to be honest. I don't think Golbat would. Now, we have a Steelix in the back for it, which is fine, but I just was kind of curious if... Golbat could survive that. So, uh, cool. Good games. Uh, good games to our opponent. That was definitely... Um, I put a lot of thought into the beginning of that for a reason. To make sure that our games went... Like, that we found any safe switches that we could. That we found optimal leads that we could. That we thought through what our opponent could do and couldn't do. Um, so, a lot of prep work there sort of 
I, I attribute a lot of like the success of those matches to the prep work, not necessarily just to the gameplay. Um, and let's see, we went against Pilosine, Flygon, and Golbat. Nice. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, our opponent had a Bibarel soft spot that sort of couldn't be solved. Um, they really kind of needed like a grass type or uh, an electric type, like a Jolt, uh, not a Joltic, whatever the upgrade is. Galvantula? Galvantula or Shift Tree or Venusaur would have like really made Bibarel not a great pick. Um, but. Yeah, maybe like switching one of the flyers out for that. Like usually Golbat tends to work better than Pidgeot in this cup. So maybe like drop the Pidgeot for any of those. And then suddenly Beaverill is like not a safe swap anymore. And it could actually get hard countered, which would be terrible for me. So um, then I would have to like strongly reconsider what my strategy was. But I felt pretty comfortable with the strategy because Beaverill can kind of always do work and always win switch advantage. And then I just have to match up the correct Pokemon. And it's like kind of a straightforward uh, game from there. But um, yeah, either way, uh, thanks for the games, iJubi. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next tournament, hopefully in person. But uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. And uh, if, if you like this, just, you know, smack the subscribe button or something. You don't have to. Uh, but hopefully that insight was uh, interesting and informative. And uh, yeah, I'll see you for game three.